three times my body And I worry I throw my fear around But this morning There's a calm I can't explain The rock candy's melted And the diamonds now remain Now ooh, ooh, Hey everyone, welcome back to the Pluck and Chuck series. We are going into a John Mayer mini series here at the end, and we're starting out with Clarity. This is an oldie but goodie. This is one of my absolute favorite John Mayer songs ever. It just has this incredible depth, this incredible beauty. It's such a great song. So here we go. We're going to get right into it. The Lesson Navigator. Use it. It has links to tabs and my additional lesson notes and it has timestamps for all the different parts of the lessons, so no one needs every single word I say in these. You can go to the parts that you need the most for what you need to learn. So, all right, that being said, this is sort of a different kind of song than anything we've done so far. We're almost going back to the beginning of the series with this technique of empty chucks, where we've just got the thumb slaps kind of in between all kinds of picking stuff. So we're going way back to this concept of empty chucks, but we have this really deep level of syncopation that we have swung sixteenths all over the place. It's just this song is very, very syncopated. And that makes it one of the hardest songs to sing along with. It's very tricky to kind of get in between the cracks with all the vocals and the guitar part. Definitely took me a lot of work to get it. So the trick to this song is to have sort of a basic version of the groove that you are really, really solid with. That you just know like the back of your hand and you can almost just forget about completely and just layer the vocals over it. But that takes a little bit of work. So what I've done in this lesson is I've created sort of a, a sort of what I think of as the master groove. You know, it's it's sort of a version of it that John plays, but he's constantly varying it when he's playing it in live shows. So this is a version of it that has everything it needs to sound like the real thing, but it's you know a nice simple version that will be really easy to sing over, at least as easy as it's going to get, pretty much. So um, in an advanced lesson, I'm going to start to go over all the more fancy bass variations and the extra melodies that he throws in. But for now, we just got to make sure we get the fundamental core groove down. So. There's going to be some sections where I talk about all the, the picking stuff. I'm also going to talk about the strumming patterns. There's all kinds of strumming patterns that get mixed in, so you're kind of juggling a couple different techniques here. But the first thing I'm going to do is just play through the whole song. So you see what I'm doing. I'll play it really slowly. So if you want to just you know, watch my hands and pick up as much as you can, you can do that. And then if you want to go into extra detail later, I'll flesh out every tiny little thing, every note of this song that you need just to get through it, I will cover in this lesson. So, yeah, I think I'm ready to get into it.
just can't. It's not supposed to. Is there a second of time I looked around? Did I sail through or drop my anchor down? Is anything enough to kiss the ground? So this song has developed quite a bit throughout John Mayer's career, and he's got all kinds of funky fingerings that he adds to it in his later recordings. I'm mostly drawing out of his really early performances of this song for this. Like I said, in the advanced lesson for this song, I will get into all the more complicated stuff, but for now I'm just going to give you a pretty bare-bones version of it. He kind of starts on an avamp that goes between G major 7 and sort of a D major 9. So usually he uses the thumb voicing. He's got the thumb down here on the 3rd fret of the thick E string. Ring finger on the 4th fret of the D string. Pinky on the 4th fret of the G string. Middle on the 3rd fret of the B string. And then a lot of times he'll turn it into inverted version of the chord, where he'll kind of pointer finger 2nd fret of the A string ring finger fourth fret of the D string still and then he'll just play the G and the B open so it's kind of like a B minor with a flat 13 slash inverted G major 7 and then he'll come up here I don't know you could get this with the thumb but it's kind of difficult I usually use my middle finger on the fifth fret of the A string my pointer finger on the fourth fret of the D string pinky on the 6th fret of the G string, and my ring finger on the 5th fret of the B string. And whatever finger is on the A string is going to kind of toggle on and off between the open string. So you're mostly going between... Uh, you can't reach it with the thumb. It's a little tricky, but you can do it. And that's pretty much the intro and all the verses. It's really just those two chords. So once you've got that part down, you're gonna to wanna to go up to what the chorus does. The chorus is sort of this A shape way up here on the 12th fret. So you probably want your pointer finger on the 10th fret of the A string. I usually just bar on the 12th fret, G, the B, and D string with my ring finger. 
And you really don't want the E string playing at all, so you're gonna kind of block the thin E string. Not with the harmonic if you can. You can also use the fingers here. Might mute it a little better. You can kind of use this finger over here to kind of lean on it from the back, like so. So you're starting out on this G weight up here. You're going down to this F sharp minor seven, which is the pointer finger on, is it the ninth fret? of the A string, the ring finger is on the 11th fret of the D string, you're barring over here to the 9th fret of the G string, and your pointer finger is on the 10th fret of the B string. So you've just gone from this G here, right hand here, this F sharp minor, and then you're going to take this same shape and you're going to slide it down to the 2nd fret and get a B minor 7 chord. And there's a slight variation that goes on with this sometimes. So you'll usually start out with this G chord, and then sometimes I'll add the pinky up here to like kind of double the seventh and then slide that down, and then I'll double the seventh on this chord too. So he'll either go, and then you can kind of hear the melody. And then when he adds that extra note, that note right there. So that's pretty much what he does on the choruses. And you know, the second verse, he'll do pretty much the same thing with. When he gets to the bridge, it's a totally different set of chord changes. It's a bunch of major seventh chords kind of right after each other. This is sort of an F major seventh voicing way up here. You have your middle finger on the 13th fret of the E string, your pointer finger on the 12th fret of the A string, and your ring finger on the 14th fret of the D string. You're just going to take the shape and shift it over to one thinner set of strings. So now you're on the A string, the D string, and the G string. But it's the same shape, and now it's a B flat major 7 chord. And then you're going to take that same shape, move it back down to the thin, uh, the thick E string, but then move it down two frets. So now your middle finger is on the 9th fret, pointer finger is on the 10th, uh, no, this is the 11th fret, this is the 10th fret, and this is the 12th fret. So watch how this moves. You can pretty much add the pinky sort of in this shape anytime. So if you started out with your pointer finger on the 12th fret, you could have your pinky on the 15th fret in that shape. And it'll give you pretty much the same effect on all the chords. And a lot of times John will kind of play around in that shape of kind of do this Lydian thing. It's a lick he throws in a lot. And then the very last thing he'll do is after he's done so much sacred in the month of June, he's here on the E flat major 7, he'll slide it down a whole step to D flat major 7. How about you? And the transition between the bridge and the chorus, he's going to play the D major 9 he played a minute ago, and then the G major 7 he did, and then back into the chorus. So an action that kind of looks like how about you? Back to the chorus. And oftentimes he'll just kind of, you know, do some slides of, you know, stuff that's pitchless or just kind of slides around so fast you can't hear it. Just to kind of keep something going or he'll just, he'll just strum it with, that it's muted. Any of that stuff will work to fill in the dead space there. Um, the one thing I want to say about the bridge progression is that I find it very difficult to get the notes up here without without whacking extra open strings here. Now, if you're really good, you, you use the pointer finger to kind of lean over on these strings to sort of mute them. But it's easy to screw that up. And it's also really difficult to get these extra little finger riffs in here, especially if you've got bigger hands. So oftentimes, I'll kind of revoice those things to down here. You can take that same shape you used up here and start it on... That is the 8th fret of the A string. And if you move it over to the... 
you have to change one note. You have to use your pinky on the 10th fret instead of you would kind of want to use to keep the shape. You want to use your ring finger on the 9th fret of the B string. You have to use your pinky on the 10th to keep that B flat major stuff. And then you just kind of move that same shape you had before down here. Now it's on the 6th fret of the A string. Here there's a lot more room for error because the frets are a little farther apart. So often I'll play this. So much is wasted in the afternoon. How about you? It's almost exactly identical in terms of the hand shape, and pitch wise, it is exactly identical. It'll sound a little different because it's on different strings, but it's another way to play it. I find it a little bit easier, and to get to the chord that gets you out of the bridge, you're actually a lot closer to it. If you're on the D flat major 7 down here. You're like right there. You don't have to jump from way up here to down there. So that's an, just an option that I'm going to offer you there. And that's pretty much all the fretting material for this song. I mean, unless you want to get into all the funky bass things that he does. But like I said, I'm going to save that for another lesson. So there's a mix of different picking techniques in this. Some of them are strumming, and some of them are pluck and chuck type things. I'm going to start with the pluck and chuck ones because those are the more challenging and I think the more interesting. And they're going to take you the longest to do, so we should start with those, definitely. Uh, but we'll get to the strumming pattern sort of later on. For now, what I'm going to do is make any kind of G chord, um, preferably one that's got all the fingers down. and I'm going to have my thumb on the thick E string, my pointer finger on the D string, middle on the G string, and ring on the B. Actually, I'm going to make the G major 7 chord that we have at the beginning of the song. It's a really good chord to have for this. And I'm going to teach you the main pattern that we use for this, beat by beat. Just one bar long, and we'll have it. So the first beat is just... And the first note is short. You kind of either mute it with your fingers or you kind of stop it with your uh, fretting hand. That's possibly too. Or you could go, you could put the fingers down here too. Both possible things. But you want the first to be short. So it's like one and two. 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 So once you've got that little thing down, the second bar is more syncopated. There's a, there's a thumb slap, a thumb stroke, and then the thumb and the fingers together. And that thumb stroke is on an open string, so you're going to kind of play the open string and then the fretted note on the second thumb stroke. So it's slap. So if I count into it, three and four and one and two, three and four and one, three four and one. And if you put that together with the first pattern, you get. So on the third beat, like right on three, there's a rest. And then on sort of the E of three, you have a thumb stroke. And on the end of three, you play the thumb and the fingers together. So it's like three, it's like three E and, three E and, three E and, three E and. Three e and, three e and. and if you put that in with the other things, you get... Every beat's got something going on in it. Um, but some of it is in the fretting hand, actually. There's going to be a pull-off. So the first thing that happens on the fourth beat is there's another thumb slap. So right after the thumb slap, the thumb and the fingers are going to play a chord. And after they play the chord, the fretting hand is going to do a pull-off. So you can hear that happen. 
make sure you just catch that. So it's like slap, chord, pull off. And then right after the pull off, there's going to be another thumb stroke. So it's slap, chord, pull, thumb. Slap, chord, pull, thumb. Slap, chord, pull, thumb. One more time. Slap, chord, pull, thumb. If you remember everything else that we did so far and you slap that on the end, we're ready to do the whole thing all put together. So see if you can just get through one cycle of this at a time, and then we'll try to loop the whole thing. So the first thing I'm going to do is just play it once. I'll count you in. Three, E, and, a four, E, and. That's one time. I'm going to do it again. Three, E, and, a four, E, and. A. Try to loop it if you're ready. Three E and four E and. And that is the meat of the pluck and chuck bit that you've got to do. There will be a little bit of shifting of the fingers around between different strings, but we'll cover that in the integration section. So once you've got that down, you're most of the way there. The next thing you're going to have to deal with is some strumming patterns. Let's start out with what happens on the chorus. The first sort of pattern that happens on the chorus goes like... kind of starts out with two beats of just, you know, strumming up and down. Oh, one thing I should mention about all the strumming in the song is pretty much done in sort of down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down. I call it the pendulum, where you just kind of constant up and down. Everything is kind of pulled out of the hand just going up and down. So as long as you know when to kind of miss the strings and when to hit the strings and when to kind of have the strings muted, or your hand can just go up and down and it helps it stay in a good steady rhythm. So the first thing you want to do is just two beats of down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up. And then on the actual beginnings of the beats, you want to hit it a little harder. So it's like one, e and two, e and. See how the, the one and the two are kind of a little heavier and everything else? One, e and two, e and. So just play that with me first. One, e and two, e and. One more time. One, e and two, e and. Again. One, e and two, e and. So once you've got that little bit down, there's sort of four beats in a row that are just down, 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 down. Except the middle, uh, I guess the third one of those is going to be muted. So it's like chord, chord, mute, chord. Chord, chord, mute, chord. Down, down, mute. And once you've kind of gotten used to that, you can kind of fill that in with some extra dead notes. You see, I kind of had the extra upstroke in there that was muted. Just for kind of extra stuff. But really all you need is down, down. If you put that in with the beginning. Down, 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 down. Three, E and a four, E and a... And then the second part of this pattern is just uh, a sort of a one bar pattern just repeated twice in a row. You're on this B minor chord. And So you kind of swing down past the strings and up down is kind of your first two real strokes. Up down. So it's like swing up down. Swing up down. And then there's going to be another down stroke right out. So it's like swing up down down. Swing up down down. Swing up down down. 
And then I guess the last thing you add is swing down, down, up. And then there's kind of an upstroke right at the end. So swing down, down, up. Swing up, down, down, up. And you see my hand's kind of just waving. Just still going like this. Even when it's not actually hitting the strings. Down, down, up. Swing up, down, down, up. Hit the chord. Two, three, four, one. Two, three, four, one. And then you just kind of loop that. If you put a couple of them together. And if you put that all together with the first kind of half of this whole pattern, you get this. Three and a four and. as many times as you need to kind of get it under your hands but it's really just that pattern a bunch of times for the chorus and when you get to the bridge the bridge pattern is kind of easy I and mean, really it's just just kind of a down up down up down up down up constantly on the 16th notes and with the with the fretting hand you're actually going to stop every kind of every two and four to get the backbeat so you'd be like down up down up mute up down Obviously, throw in variations of this where you skip notes here. But it, generally, the feeling is. And you see, it's just down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down. And if you want to give a little bit of accent to the numbered beats where it's like the one, the two, the three, and the four. One and a two and a three and a four and a three and a three and a three and a four and a one and a two and a three and a four and a one and a three and a three and you can do that to give it a little bit more bounce, but generally speaking. Actually a lot of the rhythm comes from the stuff you're doing in the left hand when you're doing extra little melodic things over these shapes. So like I said, strumming for the bridge. It's really not too tricky at all. And uh, once you've got all that down, that's really all the picking material you're going to have to deal with. You're pretty much ready to put the whole thing together. So we are putting it all together now. Uh, we're starting out with... And the thing that's a little bit different about what we did before is there's, there's some kind of pull-off-y sorts of things that get between these chords that I'm going to show you right now. So we're starting out with... You're kind of starting out with the fingers on the D, G, and B string and the thumb on the E string. You want to want to thumb slap on the A string because you're kind of switching into this position where it's sort of, I think I mentioned it's the inverted G major 7 version. And then you're kind of plucking with the A open and then with the pointed finger on the second fret. So that's just the important little starter. You know, the bass is kind of going. And then at the end, it kind of pulls off. Because it's kind of going up to here. So it's, the bass is going. If I do it with fingers. Into 
this chord, we basically have a similar pattern. Now our thumb's on the A string. And when we get to the kind of the end of this chord, when we pluck it together, we're going to pull off to the open A string and then play the open thick E string and back to the G chord. So it kind of looks like it's the last beat. So if we put that whole D chord together, we're back to the G. So that whole verse groove is basically Obviously, there's a ton of variations you can do with this with doing all the triplets in the bass and any other kinds of pull-offs and adding extra. A lot of times I'll just add extra kind of chuck strums in there to make it a little fatter at certain points. But that's generally speaking, we're going to explore those more in a later lesson. Um, like I said, you're going to have your hands full just getting this really solid and then singing with it. I guarantee you that's quite tricky, singing over the screw with the verses is is a challenge. So start with that, get it down. When we get to the chorus, we're putting that strumming pattern I gave you together where it's starting just down, up, down, up, down. We want to get the pendulum strumming and then add the chords in. Here we go. That's what we're doing. I'm going to do it a little slower so you can play along with me. Three and a four and a down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, down. down. Some extra dead notes in. You can definitely add a lot of extra you know you're, you're free to mess with that if you want but again this is another good one it's really have it's really good to have kind of the core groove down so that you don't get too confused when you're trying to sing. And then if you want to kind of vary it up more, that's kind of for more advanced stages of knowing the song. So that's how the, that's how the chorus goes. Now we're going on to the bridge. And again, bridge is nothing fancy. It's just this down, up, down, up, to down, up, down, up, down. And just on the two and the four, you need to kind of lift these fingers so you, you get that mute for the backbeat. So it's like down, up, down, up, mute, up, down. strum any kind of dead notes you want in between this thing. There's a lot of ways to kind of get between. I mean, you could really do anything in there. You can just keep it, leave it completely open. Just whack the chord, wait, wait, whack the chord, wait, wait. Like if you've got the band going with you, you can definitely do that. That's definitely the way you want to do it. If you're just by yourself, I would do some kind of strumming, John, we usually go, you know, just kind of do the strumming pattern, something that he does before this, pretty much anything's going to work, and then just, you know, sliding up and down these bass strings. Um, but generally speaking, uh, the, uh, the big trick is, with this bridge, is these little melodic fragments that he does, they just kind of add to it a little, kind of like toggling the pinky in there, and on this he kind of goes, there on the G string. It's a little thing he does. This chord. He'll use the pinky in there on, I guess, the 12th fret of the A string. Kind of slide that around to get a little 
Euclidean riff there. So with those variations again. And we'll do the same Lydian riff on the D flat major seven. Yep. And uh, that's really the only other trick to this, to the bridge. I mean, really, you're just putting it together. The song is fairly straightforward once you know the basic grooves. So yeah, use that you know, to put the whole thing together, watch some recordings of John doing this, and start to throw your own ideas in on it because you know, just playing it in a basic way can be very simple, but again, this song can be very, very open to all kinds of funky jams. Like This is really bringing out John's kind of soul funk influence. He's really drawing in on some more intense rhythmic things here, and you can, you can really go all out on it if you really get to know the song. And I think, to me, playing it like that is really what makes it fun. So um, we'll explore that more in a later lesson, and until then, take it easy. I worry how it feeds times my body.